is diamonic. You see it right there on all the seams. And way to set this up for me, man. This is perfect. Absolutely. I love it. That is really cool to see. So there, it's it's really like a kind of like a thick paint, right? My favorite part of the mock-up, though. Check this out. They've got the scratch coat, the brown coat, and the finish coat. And interesting enough, how many total square feet do you have in this building that you got? Around three hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, the build show is going commercial today. We're on a white construction job here in Austin, Texas. And I've got the project manager, Jonathan Birch with me. Jonathan, thanks for giving me a tour today. Absolutely, thanks for coming out. So I drove by this the other day. I saw this beautiful fluid applied weather barrier going on and I said, man, I've got to meet these guys. So I dropped into the construction office. I met Jonathan, I got the approvals to shoot some videos here. We're gonna give you a little bit of a tour and we're gonna show you a few details that Jonathan and the rest of his commercial construction buddies do on a regular basis that we don't necessarily do on residential job sites. We're going to see if there's some things that we could translate to you on your residential buildings. And by the way, a huge thanks to White for giving us a tour. And Jonathan has a degree in construction science from Texas A&M, so this is a good local boy to, uh, to give us the tour. Yes, sir. Let's start right here, Jonathan. Talk right. to me about this big black roll-on product you got here. This is a fluid applied, right? Do you guys do yes, this very often? It really just depends on the job. Um, you know, every every job's a little bit different, but for this particular one, it's everywhere. Yeah. Every, everything we got almost. And it's on top of, I'm seeing some green and some purple sheathing. What is that on the outside of this building? Yeah, so that's something we, we typically would, would never do, but everyone knows with the, with the pandemic issues, the supply chain issues, we, could not get a hold of the uh, the sheathing we started with. So we had to go through the proper channels, get approvals from the architect and owner to switch the product. It's all it's all the same performance-based specs and everything, but that's why it looks different. Got it, so I'm seeing that's a USG uh, product, and that's probably a 5 8 fire-rated gypsum sheathing. Right. Fiberglass face on both sides to prevent mold or water damage. And then that's a perfect substrate for you guys to do this fluid applied water and air barrier on the outside of the building, right? Yes, sir, it's perfect. Now what I'm seeing though is interestingly enough, it looks like you've detailed the windows first and all of your penetrations and you put, uh, it looks like a Trimco product, which is probably a flashing tape on top of that. And then you've also detailed all the seams on the sheathing nail holes, that sort of thing with another Tremco product before the fluid applied. Is that, did I get the order right? For, yeah, for the most part, that's, that's how it, it would typically go. Yeah, sheath it up, detail the, the joints and, and the holes. Um, and then just depending on kind of manpower, what's going on around the area would uh, depend if we would put the, the uh, XOR 110 mm -hmm. first or not. But either way, you have to overlap them, right? right. So. Either you get to a certain point and then detail it after the fact, yeah. or, um, or preferably you have the 110 on there first and roll right over the top. Now, Southwest Sealants is your commercial waterproofing sub on the job site, and I got to see them the other day on the high lift, boom, applying the product. And you can kind of see it once it's applied now, but it looks like it's mainly roller applied, right? You could, you, they probably have a spray version of this. Uh, they probably could brush it on, but they were rolling it on which I think is interesting because look, you can notice at the bottom, they have they stopped at the bottom because there's probably a, a through wall flashing detail that's not complete yet that needs to be put on. I think that really shows the power of fluid applied. And as you look at this building, it looks like one big black monolithic membrane, even though they did it in sections. So that's kind of something that I see as a residential builder saying, hey, that's a pretty cool benefit of fluid applied products. Yeah, it, it's definitely nice, you know, um, just get a couple of guys up in a boom lift and let them get to work and they can do a, a lot. They can get a lot done pretty quickly. So, um, and yeah, do, like you said, do it in whatever order you need to. Now, Jonathan, this project uh, I suspect is, is like a lot of yours where these clients uh, aren't thinking about this building in a 20 year, 30 year life cycle. This isn't a strip mall that you're building here. This is a product that, uh, or a project I should say, that the owners are thinking about a long, period of time like this is this is almost institutional like we're building a building for Harvard here 
Show me or, or talk to me as we're walking around about some details that you see that are different on this building than maybe buildings that only have a 50 or 100 year lifespan. Sure, yeah, it's, it's a great, like you said, it's a great client that really cares about their, their product, their building. Uh, Westminster is a client celebrating their 55th year anniversary this year and you know they want to be around for another 50 without any without any worries yeah so uh, yeah they definitely go for a great product all concrete structure okay so each deck is concrete that we're seeing here that's right and then it looks to me like you've got lintels at each level so that's probably full masonry on the outside going on as well yes sir it, we have a combination of masonry stucco and like uh cast stone awesome and I saw when I drove in the other day, you guys have a mock-up right by your office of all those. We'll make sure we check out that mock-up to kind of look at those details. But in the meantime, let's go see if we can find a spot where these guys are actually applying some of the fluid applied. We'll catch you over there. Oh, Jonathan, way to set this up for me, man. This is perfect. Absolutely. I love it. So this is Southwest Sealant. So you got two of their guys rolling on that fluid applied product. That is really cool to see. So they're, it's, it's really like a, kind of like a thick paint, right? Yeah, pretty much feels, yeah. And if, I don't know if you can get a, a shot of the, the, the bucket, bucket, but it's real thick, real yeah. thick, goopy yeah. paint type stuff. Yeah, that's cool. And so with a high lift like this, this two man crew can probably go top to bottom on the whole wall, right? Yeah, yeah, these guys, yeah. You get two guys in a boom lift up here and they they get after it, man. They're, they're doing work, very clean, very uh, consistent, but, yeah. but they do it quick, they're, they're great. And this shows the power of it. We talked about it earlier where you had that base flashing that was missing, but it doesn't matter for them to start in the middle of the wall. Now you probably wouldn't normally do that, but you're doing it for us because we're in this easy spot to show it. But because it's a fluid applied, it rolls onto itself, it sticks to itself, you're good to go. Yep. Now who, out of curiosity, who detailed the sheathing with all the joints and seams with that Daimonic product from Tremco. Is that a different trade than these guys? No, it, it'll be these guys. I don't know if it was this particular crew, but yeah, Southwest Sealants did that. Okay. And when I frame a house, my frame carpenter, you know, it's obviously wood construction, is also sheathing and is also doing the weatherization. Uh, it's different for you guys, I'm assuming, right? Someone else is putting the gypsum sheathing on the outside? Yes, our framer who does all the interior walls also does all the exterior walls, with the exception of the windows, of course, but all these pony walls and everything, and they sheet everything as well. Got FL it. Crane, they're, they're another great sub of ours. And this is obvious to you, but not always obvious to me, having not done commercial construction. This is a concrete deck we're on, and that's really what your building is, which has concrete uh, columns, right, that have rebar and then are filled with concrete. And then you see those platforms rising one at a time with a bunch of sticks holding them up. Is that pretty much how this building was built as well? Yeah, with this, the particular piece we're standing on is the only part that wasn't built that way. Okay, um, just well, because, we're in a connecting right, bridge here. Right, but yes, absolutely. Everything from the 55 feet below the surface in our garage all the way to the top is concrete. And yeah, so basically the, you know, the basic order of operations is, um, they put up the form, form boards with the shoring, lay all the rebar, pour the concrete, strip the shores, reshore it um, as they move up. You have to wait for curing times and things like that. But yeah, uh, shore and reshore. And then eventually, once you get about three levels up, you take the reshores out completely and strip the forms and it holds. And then the framer then, or the steel stud guy is coming in and all these walls are not structural. They're literally just holding up sheetrock and a place for us to run our utilities. That's right. And then I saw in your building, you've got exterior insulation, which is then uh, doing, because steel studs are terrible for thermal, right? They're, they're transferring uh, the heat or the cold out through the building pretty easily. You've got a thick blanket of exterior insulation on this job as well. That's right. I believe, I believe it's an inch and a half uh, rigid insulation board. On the full outside of the building. Correct, yeah, correct. That's awesome. Yeah, and then obviously the- Some cavity insulation too. Probably. Right, right. Yeah. Tell you what, before we cut the uh, video, I would love to walk this hallway with you or maybe the one downstairs and just point out a couple details that are interesting and different about commercial and then we'll let you get back to your meetings. Sure. All Sounds right, let's, we'll meet you downstairs. It's called a mill gauge right here. This one is giving us numbers right here, 45, 50, 60, 70, up to 110. 
what you do is you put this gauge on, on your flat surface of your sheathing. And then you see the air gap between uh, the phone screen and that gauge mark? That shows you the mill thickness. And these guys are going for 60 mil. This product's pretty straightforward. Once they roll it on, it's kind of naturally gonna be that. But they're gonna check this gauge as they go along. They pop it into that black fluid applied material. And then as long as the, there's black showing on the 60, they know they've got it at least 60 mil thick, which is what the manufacturer uh, is calling for on this job. I want to point out two things. I want to look at the mock-up with you, but before we go over there, the outside of the building's full masonry, and when we started the video, you saw me in that area that was kind of a courtyard where you could see all the uh, sections of the building all in black with that fluid applied. The guys are, the masons are on this side of the building installing all the true brick over here. Interesting, now you can actually see the Atlas Energy Shield uh, foil face polyiso. I actually use that on my house as well. And that's what's gonna help break those thermal bridges at the steel studs. But here on this building, which they completed not too long ago, you can see that through wall flashing in the lintels at each level, like right here where the brick uh, stops and then you've got these stone uh, kind of band course. Look how they did such a nice job of doing weeps at every one of those uh, places where the stone meets. And they actually have a commercial weep product in there that's keeping bugs out but letting water and air uh, get through there. They also do a nice job of doing weeps above the lintel at the head. I really like seeing that. And it's hard to see it, but at the brick line as well, there's a weep line at the brick as well. And then there's one on the next story up and one on the next story up. Let's go check out the mock-up before we leave the job site. Common on commercial job sites, not very common on residential job sites is a mock-up. I've done a couple of them, but usually it's to look at some architectural details. But what's interesting here is they're really doing it to look at waterproofing details, layering, that sort of thing. Let's look at a couple things here that are interesting. Most of the facade is brick, but there's some stone and a little bit of stucco. Where two different facade materials come together, there's a gap. And check this out, the commercial sealant guy is putting a backer rod in there, and they're showing the sealant on there, two different color options, probably to give the architect some options. But this is a, this is a textbook example of how you caulk a joint. You don't want that caulk to go all the way in. You want it to hit this backer rod so that it's only adhered here and here, and then the flexibility of the sealant will allow it to not crack over time. This is my favorite part of the mock-up though. Check this out. This is the uh, gypsum sheathing like we looked at earlier, and this is that black membrane, that XOAir 220. They've got a stainless steel base wall flashing, so where the wall hits the concrete, we're kicking any water out. On top of that is a peel and stick flashing that's been detailed with this, uh, I believe this is Daimonic from Tremco. And then on top of all that is this XOAir 220 that we saw the guys rolling on and detailing. Now, because these are steel studs back here, we need something besides just cavity insulation because those steel studs are very conductive. You know, we use copper for wiring because it conducts uh, electricity. Same with steel studs, it conducts heat. We need to break that with some exterior insulation. They're showing this blue XPS on here, but the building actually has Atlas Energy Shield, so that must have been a, a change. But this is kind of cool to see a, a stucco mock-up. This is kind of textbook stucco. We've got two layers of felt paper behind the stucco. Then we put our lath up. We've got a weep screed at the bottom, which kicks water out. On top of the weep, it, or pardon me, on top of the lath, is the first coat of a three coat stucco, which is the scratch coat. Then this is the brown coat. And then after the brown coat, this is a detail I don't see very often. This must be more of a commercial detail. They've got a fiberglass uh, mesh material that's going on, basically it looks like when the finished coat goes on. And there's your commercial stucco detail. Man, so cool to see all these details. White's really nailing the details. Jonathan, as I walk this building with you, I know these details are kind of normal for you, but so different for me with these big concrete columns as your structure and all the steel studs being really just drywall holders. Uh, the other thing that really strikes me that I don't have to deal with uh, on residential, nearly to the extent you do, is fire resistance and fire rated assemblies. 
you must buy just cases of Hilti fire rated cocks and putty pads for a building like this. Even such that I saw like your blocking in the wall looked like it was pink uh, fire treated plywood, right? Yes, yeah, so you know, the fire rating for the most part, each subcontractor handles their own penetrations for okay. fire rating. So, um, so in other words, if the electrician penetrates a firewall, he's the one who's in charge of correct, cracking that. Correct. And um, yeah, so there's there's always cases and tubes laying around. But um, we also you typically because on a job like this, we have a state inspection for uh -huh. fireproofing, yep. and uh, so we typically hire a separate third party contractor as well to verify that all the all the penetrations are properly sealed. They have a, a UL assembly that's approved for a one hour, two hour rating, whatever the case may be. So uh, yeah, we have tons, tons of red, red uh, stuff, circling you penetrations everywhere. <laughs> Big time. And as we look up at these ceilings, and you've got these concrete decks and just miles of piping and ductwork and uh, all kinds of stuff attached to that. It's interesting though to see, because some of this is like what we use in residential, but on steroids, right? There's some PVC drain waste vent in a few places, a lot of cast iron drain waste vent. Uh, your sprinkler system, is that on uh, PVC or are you running sprinklers on uh, on cast iron? The sprinklers on cast iron on the, the big black pipe, schedule 40, schedule 80. Okay, so that's cast but it's iron big, as well. Big cast iron. Pressurized yeah. cast iron yep. for fire sprinklers. Yes, sir. And then I'm seeing that uh, looks like most of your water lines are all open or PEX, which is nice because now you've got some flexibility to move. I bet your subs like that. They, they do like that. It's for the, uh, for the smaller diameter lines mm -hmm. uh, we're using that and uh, yeah it's great they love it you can snake it snake it through whatever so your bigger through. diameter lines are using a different type of uh, uh yes. of water line for that probably right okay gotcha and then it's interesting to see you've got both forced air in the uh, project with which i love to see some rigid metal duct and obviously rigid here as well but then dropping the last couple feet in flex that's the way i do it in residential as well it quiets that air down but you've also got, it looks like, a VRF system, uh, which is these mini-split recessed cassette heads that have their own free online to them. And if I remember correctly from my training, you could heat and cool differentially at each one of those heads because there's a branch box they go to, and they're smart enough to know, hey, this unit here is calling for heat, but this unit over here is calling for cooling, and it'll send the free on where it needs to go. That's right, and especially on the upper floors where we have a bunch of units, uh, living units right in a row, you, you'll see a branch selector with, you know, dozens of refrigerant lines going going in and coming out and going to all the different units. And yeah, it's, it's great for an application like this where everyone obviously wants their own temperature, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Last thing I want to mention, it's so interesting to see as I look around, you've got these crescent job boxes for each one of your trades. Uh, so obviously your, your trades are locking their own tools up at night and they've kind of cordoned off an area for maybe their electrical parts trades, that sort of thing. A little different than us in residential where often we're taking things home with us at night and the jobs are not as massive as we uh, have here. How many total square feet do you have in this building that you got under your control, Jonathan? So between this and the addition, we're around 300,000. <laughs> That is a lot to take care of. Hey, it keeps us busy. It's Jonathan, it's really, fun. really appreciate the tour. Yeah. You and the crew at White Construction, huge thanks uh, for allowing me to invade and show these guys how you guys do it. Uh, good luck on your project schedule. It's tough right now, but hopefully you'll make it. Yeah, well, of course we will. We always do. I'll put a link in the description to uh, White Construction and, and all their social links so you can follow these guys. And if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, sign up for our newsletter because over at thebuildshow.com, we've got 10 new videos a week showing you all the best practices, all the ways to do it right on your next build. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on thebuildshow.com.